sleeping? He's dead. Dead in his world, dead with him, and a new world beginning. Poor old Fox, he and his flags and his folly. And now for the rule of the earth, and a new life for mankind. <laughs> We all hope to see it one day and hope it shall be fantastic. But the continuous problem with movies that attempt to predict said future is that they consistently seem to get things so wrong. For instance, the year 1984 looked nothing like George Orwell's book and film of the same title. In 2001 A Space Odyssey, don't even get me started about how far off the mark that one was. You always fall asleep midway through it. That is indeed correct, my good fellow. However, I do that only because Hal has a pleasing voice quite similar to my mother's. Onward. Welcome to Creature Features. This is Tangella, that is Livingston, and I am Vincent. And the reason I bring up the future is because tonight's film seems to be so full of it. And while future predictions in films occasionally get it right, tonight's movie is not one of those exceptions. For this evening, we shall be screening the 1936 film, Things to Come. Written by H.G. Wells, this movie features the silver flying rockets we've come to expect from the likes of Flash Gordon and Buck Rogers and are the oddities that never came to pass. It is, however, still a wonderful film, and we think you will all enjoy it. Tolerate it would be more accurate. Perhaps. And joining us to watch tonight's film will be Mr. Steve Wyatt, a man who has organized more fan conventions and Comic-Cons than Bill Graham did with music concerts. He'll be telling us about what's coming round the pike for future Comic-Con shows. He'll be promoting as well as offering some insights into tonight's film. So prepare for a night of clairvoyant predictions. The future begins right after these important advertisements. That's disgusting. Stay tuned. Dripping into your mind, like the seconds of a time bomb into a false reality. Yet you crave this creepiest, scariest moments of this realm. These are the chilling stories from the deepest corners of the internet. Join me, your host, Spooky Boo, at www.scarystorytime.com. Get scared. This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. <laughs> but before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. <laughs> Fifteen minutes. 
Besides watching online videos like this one. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Hi, I'm Linda Blair. And if you want to be scared, stay tuned on North Bay Television. Coming up. Welcome back to the show. We are joined by Mr. Steve Wyatt, con organizer extraordinaire. I, uh, what do you call yourself? Show promoter? Show promoter. But you could be like a, a rock and roll show promoter if you said that. You're like a con man. Con man. You're a con, con, man. con man. I'm gonna, we're going to put that man. on the thing. You're a con man. I'm a con man. And you're not just one who goes. You're one that shows. Exactly. That's amazing. Well, you know, I've got maybe five million questions I want to ask you about this particular business. However, we have a movie to watch. Things to Come. Have you seen it? I have seen it many, many years ago, based off the H.T. Wells book. Same with me. And I don't quite remember. You know, I've seen little segments on YouTube over the years. But uh, you know, the special effects for that time, 1936, right? Right. Quite good. I mean, they. I couldn't do that now. I, I couldn't do anything now, but especially yeah. effects like that. Yeah. All right. Let's check out things to come. We'll be right back after the break with Mr. Steve Wyatt. Stay with us. Early. Yes, I'd finished up. It was too late to start anything fresh. What's all this fuss about in the papers tonight, Mr. Cabell? Wars and rumors of wars. Crying wolf? Someday a wolf will come. These fools are capable of anything. In that case, what happens to medical research? It has to stop. That'll mess me up. Mess you up. Mess everything up. My God, if war gets loose again. Happy Christmas, everyone. While shepherds watch their flocks by night, all seated on the ground. What's the matter with you fellas? Oh, that. Huh. This little upset across the water doesn't mean anything. Threatened men live long and threatened wars never occur. <laughs> Another speech by him. But I tell you, there's nothing in it. It's just to buck people up about the air estimates. Now, why meet wars halfway? Why not look on the bright side of things? You're all right. Your business is going up. You've got a jolly wife, a pretty home. All's right with the world, eh? Mm. All's right with the world. Certainly. Passworthy, you should have been called Pippa Passworthy. Oh, and Cabal, you've been smoking too much. You're not, uh, you're not eupeptic. <laughs> oh, come on, it's Christmas. Noel, 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 born is the king of Israel. Peace on earth, goodwill towards men. <laughs> Real old-fashioned Christmas this year. Fresh little snow with a nip in the air, eh? <laughs> what is that? Sounded like a gun. Oh, no guns here. Merry Christmas, Cabell. Here's to another good year for all of us. Another year of recovery, eh? <laughs> What's the searchlight doing now? Yes. Well, it must be anti-aircraft maneuvers. Maneuvers at Christmas? No. Listen, guns again. Here, the bell speaking. The hill down here, drum is free. Mobilization. Oh, 
God. Perhaps it's only precaution and mobilization. The unknown aircraft passed over Sea Beach and dropped bombs within a few hundred yards of the waterworks. They then turned seaward again. By this time, they'd been picked up with the searchlights of the battleship Dinosaur. Before they could mount out of range, she had opened upon them with her anti-aircraft guns. Unfortunately, without result. Of course, everyone has said this time they'll start without any declaration of war. Oh, listen. We do not yet know the nationality of these aircraft, though, of course, there can be little doubt of their place of origin. But before all things, it is necessary for the country to keep calm. No doubt the losses suffered by the fleet are serious. That losses of the fleet? Listen, listen. And it is imperative that the whole nation should at once stand to arms. Orders for a general mobilization have been issued, and the precautionary civilian organization against gas will at once be put into operation. Our instructions have just come to hand. We shall cut off for five minutes, and then read you the general instructions. Please call in all your friends. Call in everyone you can. You've got your stimulant, Passworthy. Something great has got you. War has come. Are you not a sir, Daddy? Well, you've got to do your bit, you know, sonny. You've got to do your bit. I'm an officer too, Daddy. <laughs> That's the spirit. Carry on, sir. Carry on. <laughs> Goodbye, son. There. Have it. Quick, march.
Guests of the show stay at the Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa in Santa Rosa. Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. Bosswick, you're watching North Bay TV. Buy my underwear. Awesome. Huh? And welcome back to the show. This uh, film, Things to Come, Things to Come, is getting interesting. You know, I noticed parallels between this whole air raid attack thing and uh the blitz in world war ii i wonder if they knew i mean it's hg wells he knew everything things to come 1936 next thing you know they're rolling into poland but uh we'll get back to this after that let's talk to steve wyatt show promoter you are con man con man (laughs) con man he makes cons you do the silicon valley comic con right we do silicon valley an amazing show Probably the best con I've been to. Almost. Yes. No. Yes, it is. <laughs> no. Well, you know, I've been to some others, but I had to drive, like, very, very far. Right, you right. Know, with yours, I didn't have to drive too far. Of course, Livingston drives, so. So what got you into this? When did you start doing this? Um, 1979. I, 1970? 1970, no, I put enough. on my first show in 1979. You organized it. Yes. Um, I had a table at Baycon, which was the big comic show in San Francisco. Right. And the morning of the show, my mom was like, I got called into work, I can't take you. Well, I was in ninth grade, and I couldn't hop in the car and go myself. So I was mad that I spent a whole $30 on a table and That's couldn't use it. That was then. a lot of money back then. Right. And so I decided to put my home on in Hayward. Called it Supercon. So the, the original uh, Supercon was, was me. I like that title better. Yeah. Well, we had Supercon for a long time before it was Big Wow, before it was right. Silicon Valley, till some company in Florida stole it from us. No. Yeah. Just, you know, those Flor- Floridians. Horrible you know? people. Horrible people. I mean, we used to be the orange capital <laughs> of the state, and now they are. Yeah. Of course, they get less frost than us. So, how many of these shows do you do a year? Um, right now, I put on about eight shows a year. Eight shows? Right. My goodness. Uh, Baker the Rolling Stones, Stones don't tour that much. No, they don't. Well, they've retired every year for the last 30 years. Well, how do you do it? This is like an enormous amount of work prior and then you got to right. do the tickets, and then you got to be there for the event, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I got to walk around and just make sure everyone's having fun. That's my job at the show. But you get to, like, rub elbows with superstars. Oh, the, the people I've gotten to meet in this industry, from comic originals to actors to, I mean, everybody. Last, I've had, last year at Silicon Valley Comic Con, you had William Shatner. We had William Shatner, who I got to I want to hear himself. stories about William Shatner. Um, William's a nice guy. Unfortunately, last year, we had him in the last two years. Right. Last year, he was really sick, so he just kind of came in, did his thing, and left, oh, um, which is unfortunate. Really? That's just it. He right. came in. He, he should have skipped the show, but he, he does love his fans. That so he him. made sure to do what he was supposed to do, and then he went home. But the year before, he was really funny. He was great on stage. Um, he hosted our our Star Trek panel with the whole Next Generation crew. Oh, I love um, that one. 
he uh i carted him around in a golf cart for a while and he's just well, joke was, after joke i was hoping you can tell me stories about him pushing televisions out of the hotel window and no unfortunately no. you know he's getting old now he's over 80 he doesn't do that anymore so. well, rolling stones still do it yeah all right i'm getting the signal that we need to get back to the film but when we come back i want to hear some more about these stars and what you're doing with these cons mr con man but first, let's get back to things to come. The pestilence has ceased. Thanks to the determined action of our chief in shooting all wanderers, 
There have been no cases for two months. The pestilence has been conquered. The chief is preparing to resume hostilities against the hill people with the utmost vigor. Soon we shall have victory and peace. All is well. God save the chief. God save our land. Have any more insulated wire? We've got no rubber wire at all, sir. Any rubber tape? There's not a scrap left in the place. We used the last on the other motor. Oh, what's the use? There's no petrol anyway. I don't believe there's three gallons of petrol left in this accursed ruin of a town. What's the good of setting me at a job like this? Nothing will ever fly again. Flying's over. Everything's over. Civilization's dead. <laughs> It's a good pre-pestilence machine. I oil it and turn it over at times. You think it'll go fast someday still? Oh, I'm not one of your petrol hoarders. But all the same, that engine turns over still. Why, I remember when I was a lad, when it was new, we thought nothing of going a hundred miles in it. A whole hundred miles. Less than three hours I've done it in. Oh, that sort of thing's all gone now. Gone forever, huh? Great, sir. Yep! Yep! Richard. What is it? You won't think me mad. Why, darling? I thought I heard an aeroplane this morning. At dawn. I thought it was a dream, but... Nonsense. I tell you, flying's finished. We shall never get in the air again. Never. I'll get petrol for you, trust me. You look after the machines. I know you haven't got the stuff, but you can get round that, for example. Transfer parts. Use bits of one to mend another. Be resourceful. Give me only ten machines in working order. Give me only five. I don't want them all. And we'll end this war of ours forever. I'll see you get your reward. Is your wife, Gordon? You keep her well hidden. Salutation, lady. Was use your influence with our master mechanic. The combatant state wants his service. I'm sure my husband does his best for you. That's uh, hardly enough, lady. The combatant state demands miracles. Not everyone can work miracles as you do, Chief. Oh, I'm sure you could work miracles if you tried, lady. Rudolph! Lady, lady, I showed it to you, but you said you didn't want it. Watsky's been up to his tricks again, and he'll have to answer for them. But he's been keeping things back from me again. Only Watsky keeps things back. What do you think of our master mechanic here? The one that we have those planes of mine to end this war of ours with the Hillman. Well, can't you make him? I thought you could make everybody do everything. Some things you can't do, madam. You can't fly without petrol. You can't mend machines without tools or material. You've gone back too far. Flying's become a lost skill in every town. But are you really as stupid as that? I'm as helpless as that. And now, Chief, what are you going to do about it? He's going to let me have those machines, and I'm going to let him have coal. Stuff to make oil. It's a lost skill. It's a dream of the... You, you and you, find out who this is and what it means. There's only one man in it. Hold him. Somewhere they can still make new machines. I didn't dream it was still possible. Yes, but who is this man? How did he dare come here? Pitch him to the town hall. Got his machine and bring him to me there. Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best.
Welcome to the Flamingo Hotel in Northern California's beautiful Sonoma County wine country. The hotel was built in 1957 to mirror the image of the original Vegas Flamingo design. It's always been the area's favorite resort because of its amenities and its strong connection to the glamour of Hollywood and Las Vegas. The Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa offers 170 guest rooms. It includes 14 suites and executive king accommodations. From all of us at the Flamingo Hotel, we thank you and look forward to seeing you soon. So you know what my favorite thing to do on February 11th, 2018 is? I'm afraid to ask. I love to go to the East Bay Comic Con, and we shall be going. I'll be with these two nincompoops, and you should come see us. We shall be doing fun stuff like watching films and eating popcorn. Or are we going to be watching popcorn and eating films? I don't know. However, the website is right here, so you should go see the website, sign up, buy a ticket, and come see us. Right? If you say so, sir. Right. A single ember from a wildfire can travel over a mile. You can't control where it will land, only what happens before it does. Visit fireadapted.org to learn how to protect your community from wildfires. watching North Bay TV, so stay tuned. And welcome back to the show. Mr. White had to step out to his van. You know that thing is full of toys. Indeed. It's, it's full of toys. And I don't think he gives them to children like Santa Claus. I think he actually has a booth where he sells them. In any case, we're going to read some letters. But uh, before we do that, how are you, Tangela? Where have you been hiding? I don't know what she's up to, but she is up to no good. Because usually she's running between our feet and causing trouble. So we're watching you. All right, what do we got first, Mr. Livingston? Our first letter is from... Job well done. Oh, the name is at the top. This is from Della. She says, thank you so much for bringing the captivatingly creepy, silly, and horrifying movies back to the Bay Area. Well, you're welcome, Della. Special hats off to Livingston, Tangela, and of course, host master, Vincent Van Dahl. Job well done. Well, thank you, Doug. It's a very nice note. You know, Quite. It's, it's not typical of what I get. You should see what we don't read on the air. Thanks again, Della. Well, I have been screening them, sir. Oh, is that why? All right. You should, because we get some bad ones sometimes. All right, this one is from Linda Parker Fidak. Is that how you pronounce the last name? Fidak? Fidak, I would guess. Fidak, yes. In San Leandro. I like San Leandro. We've been there. Twice. We had to pick up, like, a piece of pipe or something there once. Furniture. I think it's I like the pipe fitting capital of the San Francisco Bay Area. She goes, uh, I just watched the episode with John Provost and the movie Bucket of Blood. Oh, this is an old letter. She took a long time to write it. I really enjoyed your conversations with Mr. Provost. Mr. Provost was Timmy on Lassie. Keep up the good work and please let Mr. Livingston and Tangella know that I really enjoy watching them every week. Well, we enjoy watching you too, Linda. I look forward to Creature Features, and you are my favorite TV host. Well, that touches me, like, right here. And here. I'm but sure. But mostly here. 
All right, what do we got next, Mr. Livingston? We have got a letter from Jim in St. Martin, California. Where's St. Martin? I haven't the vaguest idea, sir. Nor do I. All right, well, it sounds like a very nice place, Jim. He says, Vincent, my son and I used to watch Creature Features with Bob Wilkins every Saturday night on Channel 2. His son must be a grown man by now. I would hope so. Thanks for your show and the wonderful technology of the DVR. What, what, what is that? It was like a diver? What's Digital it? video recording. Oh. So it means he does not have to watch it live. Correct. Oh. Well, it's not. I used to do that with videotapes. We can again enjoy creature features together. Bad movies and all. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jim, and keep up that DVRing that you're doing. That's it for letters. If you'd like to send us a letter, you can email it here or you can use the postage office here. One way it'll get to us or another. And if we read your letter on the air, it's going to be wonderful for us both. So do it. We'll be right back with the film. Stay with us. Come along, Mary. I must see that machine. Who's in control of this part of the country? The chief. What we call the boss. Good. I want to see him. He sent me to arrest you. You can't do that. But I'll come and see him. Well, you're under arrest whether you'll admit it or not. The country's in a state of war. Well, come along. I know the way. I remember this place well. I used to live over there for years. Ever heard of a man named Partworthy? Harding? Look, here he comes now. So you're Harding. I seem to remember something about you. You were a young man. You're John Cabell. I remember you. I used to visit your house here, endless years ago before the wars. You're still flying. Your hair is grey, but you look young enough. Ah, Vink here. Who's in control in this place? Oh, we have a chief, a warlord. Mm, the usual thing. I want to look up your warlord. Where can we go and talk? In my laboratory is the best thing. It's just over here. Right. Oh, come on. You can't go in there. You're under arrest. You've got to go with me to the chief. All in good time. I must see this gentleman first. Well, you've got to go with me. Orders are orders. The box first. Where is this man? Why isn't he brought here? Well, he's got up with Dr. Hardy. He has to be brought here. I must deal with him. Yeah, you can't go to him. That's impossible. He must come to you. But send another man for him. Send three men. He's got to be brought here. So that's the sort of man your boss is. Not an unusual type. Everywhere we find these little semi-military upstarts robbing and fighting. That's what endless warfare has led to. Brigandage. What else could happen? But we, who are all that are left of the old engineers and mechanics, have pledged ourselves to salvage the world. We have the airways, all that's left of them. We have the seas. And we have ideas in common. The brotherhood of efficiency. The Freemasonry of science. We're the last trustees of civilization when everything else has failed. I've been waiting for this. I'm yours to command. Not mine. Not mine. No more bosses. Civilization's to command. Tell him you'll have to come. He won't come on foot. Well, we'll have to carry him. I don't know what'll happen to me, sir, if you don't come. What do you want to see me about? 
Who are you? Do you know this country's at war? At war? Still at it, eh? We must clean that up. What do you mean, we must clean that up? Or war? Who are you, I say? The law. Law and sanity. I'm the law here. I said law and sanity. Where do you come from? Who are you? Wings over the world. Well, you know, you can't come into a country like this in this fashion. I'm here. Do you mind if I sit down? And now, for the fourth time, who are you? I tell you, wings over the world. That's nothing. What government do you under? Common sense. I belong to world communications. We just run ourselves. Yeah. You run into trouble if you try and land here in wartime. What's the game? Order and trade. Trade, eh? Can you do anything in munitions? Not our line of business. Fuel, spare parts. We've got planes, we've got planes. I've got boys that have trained a bit on the ground. We've no fuel. It hampers us. We might do a deal. We might. I know where I can get some fuel. I've got my plans later. But if you can manage a temporary accommodation, we do business. World communications helps no one to make war. End war, end war. I want to make victorious peace. I seem to have heard that phrase before when I was a young man. But it made no end of war. Now, look here, Mr. Aviator. Let's see how we stand. Come down to actuality. The way you swagger, you don't seem to realize you're under arrest. You and your machine. You'll find other planes looking for me if I happen to be delayed. We'll deal with them later. Now, you can start a trading agency here if you like. I have no objection. The first thing we shall want is to get our planes in the air again. Quite. A laudable ambition. But our new order has an objection to private aeroplanes. The impudence. I'm not talking about private aeroplanes. Our aeroplanes are public aeroplanes. This is an independent, sovereign state at war. I know nothing about any old order. I'm the chief here, and I'm not taking any orders, old or new, from you. Suppose I walked into trouble. Yeah, you can take that as right. Where do you come from? I flew from our headquarters at Basra this morning. We have some hundreds of new type planes and we're building more, fast. The factories are working again. We're gradually restoring order and trade in the whole Mediterranean area. We're scouting this region now to see how things are. You found out. This is an independent, sovereign state. Yes, we must talk about that. We don't discuss it. We don't approve of independent, sovereign states. You don't approve? We mean to stop them. That's war. If you will. All right, I think we know how we stand. Burton, take this man. If he gives you any trouble, club him. You hear that, Mr. Wings, over your wits? My friends know my whereabouts. If I don't come back, they'll send a force to find me. Perhaps they won't find you. They'll find you. They'll find me ready. Take him to the detention room downstairs. Now, was that wise? Wise? Yes, wise, to quarrel with him at once. Quarrel with him? Confound him, he began to quarrel with me. <laughs> you must clean that up. Clean that up? My wall. But there's things behind him. Things behind him? Some sort of aerial bus driver standing up to me. Like an equal. So you lost your temper and you bullied him. I don't bully, I just handle the man. He's the first real aviator that has come this way for years. Think of what that means, my dear. You want aeroplanes, don't you? You want your aeroplanes put in order? A really clever man could have had some of those machines up long ago. I'm sure of it. Along comes this stranger who's going to clean me up. You expect me to hand my planes over to him, lock, stock, and barrel? Why talk nonsense? You could have persuaded him under supervision. Supervision? It's all oafs I've got here to supervise him. It'd be too much for them. Oh, well, of course, if it's going to be too much for you, why don't you hang him and hide his machine before the others are after you? I don't agree with you. I don't agree with you. Now, this stranger hasn't taken me by surprise. I knew he was coming. Yes, I knew he was coming. I felt this conspiracy of air bus drivers brewing somewhere in the world. I felt they were getting ahead with their aeroplanes down there somewhere. Very well, now's our chance. We've got this fella bottled up. They won't even begin to miss him for days. 
I've got everything fixed from now for an attack straight away on the Floss Valley to the old coal and shale pits where there's oil too. Then, up we buzz. Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. Vincent, this is Tangella, and we just want to remind you we've got a wonderful website. It's at creaturefeatures.tv, and at that location, we've got things like previous episodes, our merchandise, we've got photographs of the entire gang, including Tangella and her hideous friend. So be sure to come see our site. You'll love it. Steve, this film, it's rather good quality for being so old. Yes. I mean, it looks like a good a good print. Yes. And we seldom get that. Crazy story. Crazy story. That's oh, a great story. I mean, I, I like futuristic films. Oh, yeah. I wish I could get more. I'd like, I'd like to run Logan's Run. Yes. I love that film, but I think the people who own it, they told us, they hung up the phone and we called and inquired. They wouldn't even... Bad people. Bad they people. would not even negotiate, so these things happen. All right, so... We are with Mr. Steve Wyatt, who is the super con man. He manages and creates and organizes conventions like Comic Cons, Silicon Valley Comic Con, East Bay Comic Con. What are some of the others you've Bakersfield done? Bakersfield Comic Con, Mouse Con. We wanted to bring a Disney show up. Uh, Reno Comic Con. Uh, I work for, uh, we do um, SAC Con, SAC Anime, Bake Anime, Pasadena Comic Con. I've been to like five of those. Yeah, I loved them all. They're just wonderful. But we weren't always guests at some of the like like sack anime. Anime people don't like us. They're like, well, you're not a cartoon. No, you're you're not a voice actor who's done a cartoon or two. That's what they want to see. Maybe I should do that. Yeah, do a, do a cartoon and then they'll like you. All right. So what's it take to put on a con? Can I do it? Um, yeah, anybody can do it if you got time. Right. Time's more important than money. They're more um, expensive, I believe. They're they can be costly. But, you know, having done it so long, um, I put the word out of the local vendors are amazing people and right. they support me. And that, that's a big part of it. Right. Not as much as, you know. When we say vendors, we're not talking about hot dog stand. We're talking you know, about the like guys who dealers, sell the comic books, toys, toys memorabilia. Right, right. Um, and then there's obviously your comic book artists. And luckily I got into this world of comic book art back in the 70s. So they all really like me. And there's a lot of local people. And... In my years, I've met a lot of big comic artists, and now they're all on my phone. I could Who's say, Who's the hey. biggest? Um, Jim Lee. Jim Lee. Jim Lee. He does Batman. Related to Stan Lee? Um, not in the least. Oh. But I know Stan. I've had lunch in his office. 
Well, I've never never heard of Jim Lee, and I've heard of Stan Lee, so I think the biggest you've met is Stan Jim, Lee. I'd say the biggest I've met is Jack Kirby, oh. who created everything with Stan Lee, but uh, I would have to put Jack on a little bit higher pedestal because he was the artistic end of, of all those Marvel comics. He, he gave them the look. Yeah, he gave them the look, and I've been I was lucky enough to know him and his wife, Roz. They were amazing people. So is it difficult to get the celebrities that you... Uh, yes, and it depends on the, the, the A-listers, yes, because they all have this agent and that manager right. and this real estate agent you have to talk to. Right, right. Um, the people I like are the, the Marta Christas, the D Wallaces, the, you know, the people that I grew up. I love them all. Yeah, I love them right. all. And, and um, I've made a, new, a lot of friends with some of those, right. and they've helped me get in contact with other celebrities. Um, it's not what you know it's who you know it's absolutely who you know all right well we want to know more of who you know when we come back after this uh, next break and uh, but first we've got to get back to things to come what do you think is going to come things things all right stay with us in the face. The 40 aeroplanes, large a force, I venture to say, as any in the world. This new oil can be adapted to our needs. That's quite a simple business. Nothing remains but the conclusive bombing of the hills. Then for a time, we can hope for a rich, rewarding peace. A peace of the strong man armed who keepeth his house. And now at this supreme crisis, you thought our master mechanic Refuse your help. Where are my planes? The job's more difficult than you think. Half your machines are hopelessly old. You have them 20 down ones. To be exact, 19. You'll never get the others off the ground. The thing can't be done as you imagine it. I want assistance. What assistance? Your prisoner. Do oh, you want that chap in black that wings over the world? You want him released? He knows his business. I don't. Enough. Make him my technical advisor. I don't trust you technical chaps. Then you won't get an aeroplane up. I want those planes. Well, if you get it. Then I want Dr. Harding out, too. Well, old associates. I can't help that. If anybody in every town can adapt to that crude oil for our aeroplanes, it's Harding. If not, it can't be done. Well, we've had a bit of an argument with Harding. He's the only man who can do this work for you. Get him. Undo his hands. Well? Well what? The salute. Damn the salute. Sure. Yeah, no, no. Well, never mind the salute now. We'll talk about that later. Now, look here. Let's see how we stand. You, Gordon, are to undertake the reconstruction of our Air Force. The prisoner, Cabal, is to be placed at your disposal. Everywhere he goes, he's to be under guard and observation. No relaxing in that. Neither you nor he are to go within a hundred yards of his airplane. Mind that. Now, you, Harding, are to assist Gordon with this cruel problem and place your knowledge of poison gas at our disposal. I have nothing to do with poison gas. You've got the knowledge of our to wring it out of you. The state, your mother, your father, the totality of your interests. No discipline can be too severe for the man that denies that by word or deed. Nonsense. We have a duty to civilization. 
You and your thoughts are driving us straight back to eternal barbarism. But this is pure treason. I protest against being dragged away from my work. Confound your silly war and your war material and all the rest of it. All my life has been interrupted and wasted and spoiled by war. I will not stand any longer. But this is treason, treason, come. No, 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 stop that. We've need of your service. Well, what do you want? You're conscripted. You're under my orders now, and under no other orders in the world. I'm master here. I'm the state. I need fuel and gas. Neither fuel nor gas. You refuse? Absolutely. I don't want to be forced to extremities. May I have a word? I understand you want all of those out-of-date crocs of yours, which you call your Air Force, to fly again and fly well. They shall! With the help of that man, Cabell, you have in the cells, and Dr. Harding here, and we even have a dozen of your planes in the air again. You! You're a traitor to civilization. I won't touch it! If you'll give me Cabell, and if you leave me free to talk with Harding, I promise you you'll see your Air Force, a third of it at any rate, in the sky again. You talk as if you're driving a bargain with me. I'm sorry, Chief. It's not I who makes these conditions. It is the nature of things. You're going to have technical services. You're going to have scientific help without treating the men who give it to you properly. That's what I've said all along. No bullying too hard, my dear. There's a limit to bullying. Why? You can't make a dog hunt by beating it? I want those planes! I wanted to look at you. I am at your service, madam. You're the most interesting thing that has happened in every town for years. You honor me. You come from outside. I began to forget there was anything outside. I want to hear about it. May I offer you my only chair? You know, I'm not a stupid woman. I'm sure. This life here is limited. War always going on and never ending. Flags, marching. Oh, I adore the chief. I've always adored him since he took control in the Testament days when everyone else lost heart. He rules. He's firm. Everyone, every woman finds him strong and attractive. I can't complain. I have everything that is to be had here. And yet, this is a small, limited world we live in. You bring in the breath of something greater. When I saw you swooping down out of the air, when I saw you marching into the town hall, I felt this man lives in a greater world. And you spoke of the Mediterranean and the East, of your camps and factories. I read about the Mediterranean and Egypt and Greece and India. Oh, I can read a lot of those old books. I'm not like most of the younger people here. I learned a lot before education stopped and schools closed down. I want to see that world. Skies. Snowy mountains, blue seas, sunshine, If pine. I had my way, you could fly to all that in a couple of hours. If you were free, and if I was free. I don't suppose any man has ever understood any woman since the beginning of things. You don't understand our imagination, how wild our imaginations can be. I wish I were a man. Oh, if I were a man. What do your people try to do to us? What are you going to do to this boss of mine? The immediate question seems, what does he mean to do to me? Something violent and foolish, unless I prevent it. That's how I see things. And if he kills you? We shall come here and clean things up. But if you're killed, how can you say we? We go on. That's how things are. We are taking hold of things. In science and government in the long run, no man is indispensable. The human things go on. We, forever. I see. And this warlike state of ours here. It has to vanish, like the Tyrannosaurus and the saber-toothed tiger. Oh, so here you are. I said I could talk to him, and I have. I told you to leave that fellow alone. Yes, and set up that drinking and swaggering and looking as proud as you could, Rudolph the Victorian. And here am I trying to find out what this black invader means. You think I wanted to come and talk to him? This gray, cold man? While you're swaggering here, there are more planes away that are Basra getting ready. Basra? His headquarters. Have you never heard of Basra? These are matters for us to talk about. 
This lady has been putting me through a severe cross-examination. But the gist of it is that away there in Basra, new airplanes are rising night and day, like hornets round a hornet's nest. What happens to me is a small affair. They'll finish you. The new world of United Airmen will finish you. Listen, you can almost hear them coming now. Not a bit of it. What he says is the truth. What he says is bluff. Make peace with the Ammon and let him go. That means surrender of our sovereign independence. But more machines will be coming and more and more. And he's here, hostage for their good behavior. Come, madam, enough of this little diplomatic mission of yours. You've got the subtlety of a bullfrog. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what she's been saying to you. I don't much care. There's no making peace between you and me. It's your world or mine, and it's going to be mine. For all your threats of swarms of hornets and so on, you're a hostage, remember that. Don't be too sure you win. So just sit here and think that over, Mr. Wings over the world. This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. Horror dripping into your mind, like the seconds of a time bomb into a false reality. Yet you crave the creepiest, scariest moments of this realm. These are the chilling stories from the deepest corners of the internet. Join me, your host, Spooky Boo, at www.scarystorytime.com. Get scared. Some moms travel miles for a present, but Cash's mom traveled the country for her child's life. To St. Jude. Yep. Cash was diagnosed in California with a rare cancer. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital tailored a special treatment just for him. Our research helps save kids everywhere. Want to do lunch? Well, someone is feeling a lot better. Go to stjude.org or shop wherever you see the St. Jude logo. Hey, we're Quiet Riot here at the House of Rock in Santa Rosa, and you're watching North Bay TV, so stay tuned. Guests of the show stay at the Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa in Santa Rosa. And welcome back to the show. We are watching Things to Come with Mr. Steve Wyatt, con operator. 
He makes cons. He makes events. He makes these things we all go to and have fun at. And I, I want to thank you for doing that because it's a thankless job, I would think. I, it's, I've made a lot of friends Good. in this world. Speaking of friends, you were telling us uh, in a previous segment that you had worked with William Shatner, mm -hmm. and he was quite pleasant. Yes. But I imagine you've had some difficulties with uh, others. I've had a few. I've had um, one particular guest who was a very small guest, but insisted that I treat her like a queen, and it was just, she was a pain in my butt. And I take it she was not the queen. She was absolutely not the queen. I met the queen. She's actually quite lovely. I would love to meet her someday. Yeah, she's lovely. Yeah. Um, I had another guest once who I signed a contract with the first time I ever was going to pay a guest to come up, and he, uh, the day after we signed the contract, changed all the terms. Now I want first class, and now I want a suite, and now I want this. So I told them, well, now I don't want you, because by changing it, he changed the contract so it null and voided, and I got a couple other amazing guests to come in instead. And who are very happy so to do the show. two for the price of one. Exactly. Well, and who needs Elvis, right? Exactly. I you mean, know, he was... You don't need Elvis. He wasn't going to play anyway, so, you know. Right. So, any others? Any, any like, terrible stories about throwing Elvis? Um, I had one guest pools? who showed up once and said, I don't have a credit card to put on the, for incidentals for the hotel, because I was paying for the hotel, and I went, okay, don't worry about it. Who... We had the same thing happen to us with who, a big star. Who spent a lot of money like eight movies and five different meals right. and it was just and this was when i was still a small show and couldn't afford that 400 extra dollars oh my goodness they, he that, and he was a minor star too but but the major ones are, are not like this the major ones are the best i mean michael j fox i stood next to him and he was just the nicest guy he did his tour so we were the first to get him just so he could go out and meet the fans. He knew his disease was getting worse, and he went, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it now. So he just went out to meet the fans. Um, the guys from Next Generation, I've gone out drinking with some of them, Marina Sirtis and Denise Crosby, and they're just, they're some of the funnest people out there. So, they're not presumptuous. And oh, not at all. They're like, uh, I would like Cinta Hall, not oh, no. this primitive alcohol. Um, the guy that plays The Flash, Grant, I forget his name, great guy, yeah. Um, he was at our last Silicon Valley, and I, I've never seen The Flash, but I presented him with a piece of art that we did for it, right. and he knew who the artist was, knew that he drew Futurama, oh nicest goodness. kid in the world. He's a comic book fan. He's a, he's a new actor. Yeah, he's a new actor. He's still fresh. Yeah. He's, give him time. He'll get an attitude. <laughs> He'll get an attitude. And matter of fact, I offered to ship the art home, and he said, no, no, I drove up here. I'll keep it in my, my passenger seat all the way home. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. That's nice. I wish we encountered more people like that. Sometimes we have similar troubles, but for different reasons. All right, what do you say we get back to this film? That's things to come. And I think the things to come might be better than the things that went. That's true. All right, stay with us, stay with us. We shall be back. Now get round to the other side and look at these engine bear brakes quickly. I could get to my plane as a wireless there. Hope Mr. won't even trust me. You shall have to make a job of this. If I can manage to get your reserve petrol, let me have that for this plane. Good. It won't be easy to make a getaway. These oil pump connections aren't very good, but we'll have to risk it. I think we'll manage it all right now that Harding knows his part of the job. Good. Cabal is a prisoner. They've got him done. He's in danger. I had great difficulty in getting here. You say Cabal is in danger? In very great danger. The boss there is a violent tough. Mm. Job for our new squadron. 
Well, now we've got a chance to try the new gas of peace on somebody. There's no time to lose, sir. May I report to headquarters? Yes. Take him to the council. At last, we have definite news. What is it? Gordon didn't fall into the sea. He got away. A fishing boat saw him making for the French coast. Perhaps he reached his pals. Well... Well, he'll be coming back. He'll be bringing the others with him. Curse these world communications. Curse all airmen and gasmen and machine men. Why didn't we leave their machines and their sciences alone? I might have known. Why did I tamper with flying? Well, we needed airplanes against the hill states. Somebody else would have started in again with airplanes and gas and bombs if we hadn't. These people would have come interfering anyhow. Why was all this science ever allowed? Why was it ever let begin? Science is an enemy of everything that's natural in life. I dreamt of those fellows last night, great, ugly, black, inhuman chaps. Oh, like machines, bombing and bombing. Yes, I guess they'll come bombing, all right. Then we'll fight them. Since Gordon got away, I've had those air boys up to see me. They've got guts. They'll do something still. We'll fight them. We'll fight them. Ha! You've got hostages? And better didn't shoot them anyway. There's that chap Harding. Of course. He can tell us what to do against this gas. If I had to pull his arm off and knock his teeth down his throat. Get him, get him. Get him, Dr. Harding. I have to come to Earth sometime. What is this world communications? A handful of men like ourselves. They're not magic. World communication people. They got gas? What sort of gas? I know nothing about gas. Tell us about these masks, anyway. Well, they're rotten. They're no good at all. What sort of gas have they got? I tell you, gas isn't my business. Well, they can't gas us when you're here, anyway. Here they are. Listen, they're coming already. Yeah, go on, 
Who's the other fellow? He's the prize hostage. He's the best of the lot. They'll know him. Fetch him, fetch him. Look. Is that gas? I saved your father and I saved you. Couldn't you call up your man there to stop this? I won't have it like this. What's happening? Everything's swimming. Shoot! Shoot! We never shot enough yet! We never shot enough! We scared of them got us. Oh, well, oh, <laughs> Why should I be beaten like this? Shoot! Shoot! Welcome to the Flamingo Hotel in Northern California's beautiful Sonoma County wine country. The hotel was built in 1957 to mirror the image of the original Vegas Flamingo design. It's always been the area's favorite resort because of its amenities and its strong connection to the glamour of Hollywood and Las Vegas. The Flamingo Conference Resort and Spa offers 170 guest rooms. It includes 14 suites and Executive King accommodations. From all of us at the Flamingo Hotel, we thank you and look forward to seeing you soon. Everyone will want to know how you began. The world is obsessed with origin stories. What's your story? So you know what my favorite thing to do on February 11th, 2018 is? I'm afraid to ask. I love to go to the East Bay Comic Con, and we shall be going. I'll be with these two nincompoops, and you should come see us. We shall be doing fun stuff like watching films and eating popcorn. Or are we going to be watching popcorn and eating films? I don't know. However, the website is right here, so you should go see the website, sign up, buy a ticket, and come see us. Right? If you say so, sir. Right. You sure you don't want some? It's chamomile. You said you are extremely terrifying. Just the scariest undead subhuman thing on TV, and I really mean that. <laughs> but I am worried that you could give my kids nightmares if they see you, so I'm gonna have to block you. <laughs> so that's it. Oh, and, and tell the zombies they're, they're blocked too. Sutherland from Power Rangers and you're watching North Bay TV. Stay tuned. Go, go, Power Rangers! Portions of this program are brought to you by Micromat, making products that keep your Macintosh running at its best.
married. No, no, she's not hurt. She's asleep like the others. Cabell, safe! Cabell! Well done, Gordon! Well, they laughed at me for sticking to my gas mask. But thanks to that, I'm here and everyone else is sleeping. I wonder if they'll ever use gas masks again. Sir! What is it? This man's not sleeping. He's dead. Dead in his world, dead with him. And a new world beginning. Poor old Bart, he and his flags and his folly. And now for the rule of the air and a new life for mankind. Our job is only beginning. For now, we have to put the world in order. It will be a long and complicated struggle. But we have the unity of a common order and a common knowledge. This is how I conceive our plan of operations. First, the roundup of brigands. That last dismal vestige of ancient predatory soldiery. The last would-be conquerors. Then settle, organize, advance. This zone, then that. And at last, wings over the world. And the new world begins. Mm-hmm. What a funny place New York was. All standing up and full of windows. Mm, they built houses like that in the old days. Why? Well, they'd no light inside their cities as we have, so they had to stick them up into the daylight. What there was of it. They'd no properly mixed and conditioned air. Everybody lived half out of doors. <coughs> they had windows of ripple glass. The age of windows lasted four centuries. I never seemed to realize that we could light the interiors of our houses with sunshine of our own, so there was no need to stick them up ever so high into the air. They keep on inventing new things now, don't they? And making life lovelier and lovelier. Lovelier, yes. And bolder. I suppose I'm an old man, my dear, but some of it seems like going too far. This space gun of theirs that they keep on shooting. What is this space gun, great-grandfather? Well, it's a gun that is charged by electricity. It's a lot of guns inside one another, and each one discharges the gun next inside. I don't properly understand it, but the cylinder it shoots out last goes swish right away from the Earth. I wish I could fly around the moon. <laughs> well, that in time. Won't you come back to your history pictures again? I'm glad I didn't live in the old world. I know that John Cabal and his airmen tidied it all up. Did you see John Cabal, Great Granddad? Well, you can see him in your pictures. But you saw him when he lived. You really saw him? Yes. I saw the great John Cabal with my own eyes when I was a little boy. He was a lean, brown old man with hair as white as mine. He was the great grandfather of our Oswald Cabal, the president of our council. I take it the space guns passed all its preliminary trials, and there's nothing left now but to choose the two who are to go. That's going to be the trouble. Thousands of young people have been applying, young men and young women. I never dreamt the moon was so attractive. Practical of the guns, perfect now. There are risks, but reasonable risks. And the position of the moon in the next three or four months gives us the best conditions for getting there. It's only the, the choice of the two now that matters. Well? There are going to be difficulties. That man Theotokopoulos is talking on the radio about it. He's a fantastic fellow. Yes, but he's making trouble. It's not going to be easy to choose these young people. With all these thousands offering themselves, we've looked into thousands of cases. We've rejected everyone of imperfect health or anyone of had friends who objected. And the fact is, we want you to talk to two people. There's Raymond Parsworthy of General Frederick. You know him? Yes, I know him. And his son. We want you to see the son, Maurice Parsworthy. Why? He asks to go. We think you ought to see him. He's waiting here.
Is Morris Passworthy there? He's on his way. Good. You want to talk to me? Forgive me, sir. I came straight to you. You're asking a favor? A very big favor. I want to be one of the first two human beings to go around the moon. It means danger. Great hardship, anyhow. You realize there's an even chance of never coming back alive. Still greater chance of coming back a cripple. Give me credit for not minding that, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, a lot of you young people don't mind that. Why should I give you a favor? Well, I'm, I'm the son of a friend of yours. And, uh, people seem to feel you wouldn't to send someone you don't know, sir. Go on. We've talked about this over and over again. We? Yes, both of us. It's her idea even more than it's mine. Her idea? Who is she? Someone much closer to you than I am, sir. Go on. It's Catherine, your daughter. She says you can't possibly send anybody's child but your own. I might have known. Experience your favorite horror, comedy, and science fiction films of the 70s, 80s, and 90s on the big screen with the cult film series at Roxy 14. Double features Thursdays at 7 p.m. Visit us on Facebook for more information. Hearties. I'm Crazy Boots Martin. And James the Red. At the NorCal Pirates Festival. And you're watching North Bay TV. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. We are watching Things to Come with Mr. Steve Wyatt, con creator extraordinaire. I mean, you've done Silicon Valley Comic Con, East Bay Comic Con, Mouse Con. Bakersfield Comic Con, Pasadena Comic Con, Reno incredible. Comic Con. That's incredible. Well, we're going to talk some more with Steve about his con stuff, his, his con man career. But uh, this film, they now have a city called Wings over the world. Now, I seem to remember a Paul McCartney song, album, related to that. Do you like him? I love Paul McCartney. Really? I think he should have just stayed with the Beatles. I think so, too. I think it would have been better. Yeah. yeah. It's too late but now, right? It's all Yoko's fault. It's That's always Yoko's say. fault. <laughs> I blamed her for the breakup of my band. I'd all right, so in doing these conventions, obviously you inspired Pryor. Right. By being a fan of I'm, the fiction. What, what was the thing that did it for you? Um, you know, I read comic books as a kid, but when I was about 10 years old, I picked up 
uh, The Avengers number 57 um, by Roy Thomas and John Buscema. So what and year it, did that come out? It came out in 1968, but I didn't read it when it first came out. Is it I like read once it. a month? Yes, it's a monthly month. book. Right. Right. And that's the one that changed my world. Um, the story was called Even an Android Can Cry. It's right. the first appearance of the vision. And he's in the new movies, right. but it's just that's the one where I saw the difference between just reading comic books and the storytelling and you know the uh, everything behind it, and it just. And prior to this, you were looking at like the cartoon stuff. Yeah, like Archie, Archie Little Archie, right. Bugs Bunny, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. The Disney comics. This is when you like went up to that at the next level. The I next went, wow. echelon. And you were mentioning that you have a painting. Yes, I um, John B. Stemma who drew that. Uh, recreated the cover three different times and he only recreated it in color once and I own the color recreation by the original artist John. Was the original color on the cover? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I even got the writer last month to sign it too so it's signed by So you Roy have this and, and this must be hanging in a place of honor. Oh in yeah. Your home. Yeah right hopefully above not, my office. I was going to say hopefully not over the fireplace. Nope. That's where my big Boris Karloff is. Boris Karloff is Frankenstein? Yes. As Frankenstein. See, now if that one fell in, oh, it would be perfect. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. And you could replace it easier too. Right? Exactly. Right. Make a new one. Right. All right. What do you say we uh, finish this film? Love to see the ending. Things to come. So we're going to watch some more of this film, and then we're going to come back to talk to Steve about things to come for him. So you stay with us, and we'll be right back. Today I'm going to put it to the world plainly. Is this thing to go on? Or are we sane and normal human beings to put an end to it and an end to all such follies forever? progress. What is the good of all this progress onward and onward? We demand a halt. We demand a rest. The object of life is happy living. We will not have human life sacrificed to experiment. Progress is not living. It should only be the preparation for living. They stage the old Greek tragedy again. And a father offers up his daughter to his evil god. And that they voice is sounding to the whole world. No. The old slaveries have taken new yeah. names. And They'll have to hear him and make what they can of him. What does this mean? Make no mistake about it. The slaveries they put upon themselves today, they will impose tomorrow upon the whole world. Is man never to rest, never to be free? A time will come when you in your turn will be forced to wait to take your chance upon strange planets and in dreary abominable places beyond the stars. An end to progress. Make an end to this progress now. Let this be the last day of the scientific age. Make the space gun the symbol of all that drives us and destroy it now. I wonder what they will make. great-grandson of John Gabal, the air dictator, the man who changed the whole course of the world. You, you've got experiments in your blood, you and your daughter, but I'm, I'm more normal. I don't believe my boy would have thought of it. The two of them must have got together. They'll come back together. This time, there's no attempt to land on the moon. Hmm. When is this great experiment to be made? How much longer have we got before they go? When the space gun is ready. Sometime this year, do you mean? Soon. Then is there no way of saving our children from this madness? But would it be saving our children? Oh, here they are. Father, where to go? Yes, you're to go. No. Two hours ago. Your feet have struck fire. All the people are excited and angry. Some are already going out of the city towards the space gun. Nothing is wanted now but leading. We must go right on with this. To the space gun. 
And so we end an age. Young people, just beginning life. Do you want to go into that outer horror? Why don't you send somebody who's sick of life? They want fit young people, alert and quick. And we're fit young people. We can observe and come back and tell. Cabal, I just want to ask you one plain question. Why did you let your daughter dream of going on this mad moon journey? Because I love her. And I wanted to live to the best effect. Dragging out life to the last possible second is not living to the best effect. The nearer the bone, the sweeter the meat. The best of life, Passworthy, lies nearest to the edge of death. I'm a broken man. I don't know where honor lies. You haven't got things right, Passworthy. Our fathers and our fathers' fathers cleaned up the old order of things because it killed children. It killed those who were unprepared for death. Because it tormented people in vain. Because it outraged human pride and dignity. Because it was an ugly spectacle of waste. But that was only a beginning. There's nothing wrong in suffering if you suffer for a purpose. Our revolution didn't abolish danger or death. It simply made danger and death worthwhile. Cabal. Cabal, the gun's in urgent danger. It's a race against time now to save it. Sierra Copulus is up with a crowd of people already. He's going to the space gun now. They're going to break it up. They say it's the symbol of your tyranny. As a weapon, bars of metal. They can smash delicate apparatus. They can do endless mischief. But you have a traffic control. Can't they produce the police? Very few. We've nothing but the gas of peace, and it isn't ready. It'll take hours yet. We must hold this crowd back at any cost for a time until the gas of peace is ready. Is it? Well, we've stopped the airways. They'll have to go afoot. And they'll take an hour or more to get there, even those who've already started. This gun mustn't be broken up. After all the final experiments have been made, when everything was ready... When everything was ready? If they smash up that infernal gun, then honor is satisfied and you needn't go. They won't smash the gun. Suppose the gun was fired now. Would the cylinder reach the moon? It would miss and fly into outer space. It's five now. If the gun were fired before seven... And it could be. Yes. Then... We go now. No, no, no. Oh, I don't know what to say, but don't go, don't go. Oh, but, Father, we must go now, or we may never go. And then for the rest of our lives, we'll feel we've shirked and... Quickly, this way. As men tied to the earth, we dream of visiting the stars. stars, we will dream.
This is your Mac. It's a good Mac. It does those things you like, the music that you love, and most importantly, the work that you do. Sadly though, sometimes it does this. Or this. Or this. But before you do this, try Tech Tool Pro, your one-stop fix-it tool to locate the source of this so that this still remains your things that you love, music that you enjoy, and important work that you do machine. Tech Tool Pro, the most advanced Macintosh repair utility ever. Horror dripping into your mind, like the seconds of a time bomb into a false reality. Yet you crave the creepiest, scariest moments of this realm. These are the chilling stories from the deepest corners of the internet. Join me, your host, Spooky Boo, at www.scarystorytime.com. Get scared. to the platform, we'll guard this below. Right. Contract all your muscles when the concussion comes. In five minutes, you'll be able to get loose and move about. What do you want here? 
We want to save these young people from your experiments. We want to put an end to this inhuman foolery. We mean to destroy that gun. We have a right to do what we like with our lives, with our sort of lives. We don't grudge you your artistic life. You have safety, plenty, all you want. We want to make the world safe for men. No one prevents you. How can we do that when your sons and inventions are perpetually changing life for us? When you are everlasting the confining, strange things. When you make what we think great seem small. When you make what we think strong seem feeble. We don't want you in the same world with us. We don't want this expedition. We don't want mankind to go out to the moon and to the planets. We shall hate you more if you succeed than if you fail. Destroy the gun! even reach the base of the gun as we fire. Beware of the concussion! Beware of the concussion! What we've done is monstrous. What they've done is magnificent. Will they come back? Yes, and go again and again. Till the landing is made and the moon is conquered. This is only a beginning. If they don't come back, my son and your daughter, what of that, Cabal? Then presently others will go. Oh, God, is there never to be any age of happiness? Is there never to be any rest? Rest enough for the individual man. Too much and too soon, and we call it death. But for man, no rest and no ending. He must go on, conquest beyond conquest. First this little planet and its winds and waves, and then all the laws of mind and matter that restrain him. Then the planets about him. And at last, out across immensity to the stars. And when he has conquered all the deeps of space and all the mysteries of time, still he will be beginning. We're such little creatures. Poor humanity is so fragile, so weak. Little, little animals. Little animals. And if we're no more than animals, we must snatch each little scrap of happiness and live and suffer and pass. Mattering no more than all the other animals do or have done. It is this or that. All the universe for nothing. Which shall it be? 
Which shall it be? And so ends Things to Come. You know, I really like this film. It was way ahead of its time. Way ahead of its time. As far as it's uh, not just the technical aspects of the filmmaking, but they showed like the flying wing design. I don't yeah. think they Like Metropolis. They made the it. B-1 bomber yet. Yeah. So, no, it was, uh, I like it. I, I shall watch this film again. Maybe not on the show, but. Uh. So, Things to Come for you. You've got. Yeah, next is East Bay Comic Con. I love that one. That this, well, you're going to be a guest at it. We did so. it last year, and we had yes. so much fun, and we're going to do it again this year. And Absolutely. I, you know, it's a, the location's the same, right? Yes. I Crown Plaza Inn in, in Concord. Uh, they, they love us. It's, it's a beautiful spot. It works perfect. Free parking. So who else might we see there besides the atrocity of... Oh, we got Marta Krista coming in, you know, Judy Robinson oh, from Lost I in love Space. Her. She's I met her in Reno. Amazing person. She's wonderful. Yes, Very and kind. then we have Mark Texera, the artist for, you know, uh, Ghost Rider, Wolverine. Oh. He's a painted artist. Beautiful stuff. Right. Um, Brent Anderson. He um, does Astro City. He's worked on X Men, Kazar. Wow. Uh, so Tony Fleece is if you're a My Little Pony fan, we got like one of the premier My Little Pony artists coming. I'm not, but Tangela is. Uh, she looks like she'd like My yeah. Little Pony. Yeah. No, well, we bought her one for Christmas last year and she damaged it. Yeah. So, any other famous stars coming? Right now, that's it. We got oh. Marta and you. Well, we've got course. time. Yeah. There'll yeah. be more. Yeah. I mean, if I was a star in San Francisco, I'd say, I, I think I need to go to East Bay Comic Con and make an appearance. You should, yeah. All right, so how do we find out more? Um, EastBayComicCon.com. That's it. Just right there. EastBayComicCon.com. Dot com. And that's it. Go there. <laughs> And then you could see the listings for the other conventions right, as well, you right? You can buy tickets online. You could see the listings of all our other shows. There's links to every one of them. The Fantastic. guests, the panels, everything's on the site. Well done. Well, make sure you go check out that site and make sure you come see us at East Bay Comic Con because it's going to be fun. All right, Steve. Thank you so much for coming. Appreciate thank it. Thank you for having me. Taking time out of your evening to, uh, to humor us. And uh, we shall see you at the East Bay Comic Con in Concord. February 11th. February. As for you guys, thanks for watching the show and staying up so late. It's Sunday already, so plan something fun. It's Sunday fun day. That ends this episode. We shall see you next week. So, Steve, I've been thinking this chat, uh, we had about Chatner. Mm -hmm. Chatner. Uh, we had a Chatner about Chatner. Chatner. Right? Maybe next time he's at your convention, you could place my table next to his. Well, maybe in 10 years. <laughs>